Hello everybody, Lord Zanderk here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very basic um, currency system in Rec Room. Now, you might notice in front of me I have what's going to be two barrels. This is just a stretched out version of this barrel. Um, essentially, uh, what I'm going to be doing to earn money in this little example, uh, the player is going to throw a barrel into this larger barrel and that's going to give them money. Uh, very basic stuff. Um, you can do whatever you want for your money system in your game, but for just just for this example uh, I'm gonna be throwing this barrel into that other barrel. Now if you want this barrel invention um, I believe I have it published on the store so you can get, grab that if you want. So firstly what you're gonna need is Obviously a way to get money. So uh, I'm gonna be putting that in there So I'm gonna start by going into uh, Gadgets other gadgets and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a trigger volume I'm going to manipulate it to fit in this area. It doesn't have to be perfect, obviously. It just has to work. There we go. That's good enough. I'm also going to make sure I have this trigger volume configured to objects because this is an object. And the tag, I'm going to make that uh, money barrel. So you're just going to need to make sure the tags are exactly the same. So you can check between them and make sure common mistake when you type in this tag you have to click the plus to uh, t apply the tags so make sure that you do that okay now we have that let's just make sure the tags match money barrel money barrel nice now, firstly we're gonna need an object respawner that is also found in other gadgets on the first page object respawner you're gonna want to bring one of these in here uh, does not really matter where it is it's just you know I, I want to get the barrel back after I throw it in there so I'm going to have this here. It's also going to have the tag money barrel. Don't give it the tag money barrel, but put it in tag to respawn money barrel or whatever your tag is, honestly. We're going to want to object, respawn object by tag in this case. If you have a bunch of objects, like a bunch of specific objects, um, actually, I honestly, let's say do it by ID. And the reason I'm saying to do it by ID is if you have multiple barrels, it's just going to respawn a random one unless you make it specifically by ID. When entering zone, and we're going to plug that into the green one, which is respawn object by ID. Now, you'll see what this does is now when I throw this barrel in here, when I put the barrel in there, now it respawns here. And I can throw the barrel in again, and it'll respawn here. Throw it in again, and it respawns there. Wonderful. Now we have that working. But as you will notice, we aren't getting any money from that. Now you can check how much money you've gotten through, uh, where is it? Props. Dynamic props should be on the second page. Leaderboard projector. I believe if we configure this, yes, we can change the stats. Now we don't really need stats two or three, so I'm just going to make those not visible. Stat one. I'm going to call stat one um, money. The short name is also going to be money. So this one we're going to want to do is go to game chips. And in game chips you'll find um, this is where you're going to find the leaderboard stat chips. So I believe so anyways. Never mind. That was, that was, that was false information. You're going to get those in the other chips. In other chips you'll find the leaderboard stat chips. Because of how leaderboards work, the, the stats aren't going to update right away. So, you won't be able to actually see on the leaderboard how your money has changed unless you leave the room and come back. However, the game will still register it the same. So, say if you were to get leaderboard stat when you have your hand in the zone, put it on a text, the text would show their current money and not what is shown on the leaderboard. So, it's preferred that you would use that. So, I'm actually going to set that up right now so you can just see what I mean. I'm going to put a get leaderboard stat here. I'm going to create in other gadgets, final page, text. We're going to throw a text right here, and I'm going to make that text say money, colon, and then we want to reference the text variable, the red text variable, so I'm going to put the little curly bracket, R, and another little curly bracket, um, and then... As you see, it doesn't, even though in here it says R in curly brackets, the actual number it says there is zero, which is because when you put it uh, R in curly brackets, that's referencing text variable R. So 
then what we can do is we can put the value into that and we're going to activate the stat channel 1 because that's the money stat channel and then we're going to create a gadgets trigger volume and we're just going to put a little trigger volume here when entering zone that's going to be the player id now it doesn't say anything right now because i have none i have none but you can see that a signal is being activated now what we're going to do here is we're going to make this this activate that so how we're going to do that is we're going to assuming this is like say some kind of tycoon game and this is my specific barrel it's going to give player one the money no matter what because this is player one's barrel so that's just how we're going to do it here so i'm going to go here i'm going to go to gadgets other chips i'm going to get a get leaderboard stat i'm going to get a get leaderboard stat and i'm also going to need a set leaderboard stat which i'm going to spawn in right here now, additionally, I'm also going to need in math chips, a combinator chip. By the way, I don't know if I mentioned this or not. You're still going to need the leaderboard projector because that sets the leaderboard stats. It keeps them in existence. If you deleted this, it would delete the leaderboard stats. But we don't really need to use it, so we can just have it kind of out of sight. It doesn't need to be visible to the players. It just needs to be in the map somewhere. Um, okay, so now that's out of the way this this value here we're going to need to firstly get if this gets an input so instead of getting because that object trigger is going to get the object id of the barrel which is not what we want to we don't want to work with that number we actually would just want to check if something was put in there and if that is the case then we're going to have a yeah uh, a compare chip which is found in math chips and we're going to want that set to greater than or equal to so if this value is greater than or equal to 1, if this, if the input of this is greater than or equal to 1, that means that something has been put in there. And that's going to put an output of 1 from here, which is the number we want to work with. So what we're going to need is we're going to check this, right? And we're going to check, I don't know where to put this, I'll just put it over here. We're going to check that... Right, we're going to want to set this combinator chip to multiplication, I believe. And we're going to get that 1 from there. Multiply that. Because this is player 1's barrel, it's just going to multiply it by 1. If this were, say, player 2's barrel, it would multiply this by 2. This is just getting the player's um, ID. And we're going to want to plug this, because this is player's ID. Something was put in there, times what player's using it. Because if it's going to come out of 0 otherwise. So then we're going to have a player ID here, and we're going to plug the player ID into there as well. And we're going to also want to make sure that these stat channels are set to stat 1, because that is the money stat. And then what we're going to want to do is we want it set to increment. So if you here, set it to increment. And then what we're going to want to do is set whatever value you have, say 50. We're going to want to multiply that by the output of this greater than or equal to chip that's connected to that. That's going to set this value that they get to 50, and it's going to plug that into this one here. So a multiplication chip connected to that, and the output of that is plugged into the value of here. And this value here is just whatever, how much money you want them to get. Let's say 50. And the reason that this money system is better than, say, just using a looping combinator chip, because you could just, say, grab something like this, right? And you could set it to plus, and then you could go like this. And now anything that's added into there is going to store. So let's say, let's get a, a button. And let's just click the button a few times. You can see it adds to it. The reason that this is better than something like that is that this is stored between rooms. So if I left this room and came back, I would still have 150 money. Um, you can do this with pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be a barrel throwing into a bigger barrel. It can be pretty much whatever you want. I hope this uh, video was helpful to you guys. Uh, if it was, please leave a thumbs up. If not, um, tell me in the comments what I could make a video on instead. Um, well, that'll be it for today, and I will see you guys next time. Alright, bye.